Mm. Hey, Amy. <laughs> hey, Taylor. So, <laughs> I'd like to bring you up to speed mm -hmm. on the massive amount of success I've had working on the Monster Board. I would love to hear about it. I'm being a little sarcastic. <laughs> I detected that sarcasm. So, um... <laughs> Here's what has been working. Mm -hmm. First thing I bought is a plug that plugs into the wall, but gives you this weird nine volt connector output. That's pretty good. So that I could just work on the computer bits right. without sucking batteries dry. And that worked great. It's not enough, it's nine volts. The motors need 12, so it's not enough to make it run. But it will keep it. But it will keep the computer only needs five volts. So, it, and the Thunderboard will step down the nine or whatever battery pack we put on there to that. So, <clears throat> so that works great. And I've been using VNC, using a Wi-Fi network on my phone. So that's what it's used to connecting to. So that should work anywhere. Good, good, good. And... Uh, and then the only other thing that I've done, so it came with this battery pack. So this is 10 AA batteries. AA batteries are 1.5 volts, mm -hmm. so this is 15. And I never got a lot of long-lasting use out of these. And that's a lot of batteries. It is a lot of batteries, and I don't have rechargeable AA's goals. Right. But what I did have are rechargeable... 18650s. So I just bought a pack that will hold four of those. Now, these are 3.7 volts, so four of them gives you 14.8. So pretty close to the same. Yeah. Pretty close to the same profile. It's a little lower. It's not as tall. Um, and I just used that same connector. So we're going to test this and see if it works. I've not tested this. Okay. We're going to bring this with us. Because it should work. Yeah. Or it does work. And then we got, right, it does we got work plans and backup plans for yeah for short term. I think this will last longer. I don't know. Maybe I'm absolutely wrong about that. When it's not, then the rechargeable part is is the nice. rechargeable part is key. I charged all of these in <clears> the <throat> dev term uh, <laughs> because it works. Um, and then we're going to try to get this mm -hmm. to connect. Um, I did realized that the problem I was having when we first, after we built the robot and we were trying to get things to work and nothing was working, the problem there was that I was using Python 3 and all the code is written in Python 2. Once I realized that that was the problem, and that took a minute. I was like, how did you realize? Ultimately, it occurred to me that that might be, because it was just throwing a lot of errors that were syntax errors. And I was like, they're not going to post this code if it's got a bunch of syntax errors. No. So no. something has to be wrong with that. And then it, it, that occurred to me that it might be a 2-3 thing. Mm -hmm. So once I figured that out and Googled it, that problem had completely been solved. Someone had written the Thunderboard uh. driver for Python 3. So I downloaded that. And then all you have to do is put that in the folder with whatever Python program you're using because <clears throat> you're going to import that. Right. And so you just change you know, the import statement to Thunderborg 3 as Thunderborg, and then the rest of the code works. You don't have to change it throughout. Yeah. yeah. I like that. And so then things started... Than poke. <laughs> Is it, though? <laughs> <laughs> God, that, that's, that's a better way. Because I was literally going through <clears throat> line by line trying to correct these syntax errors. Oh, God. Yeah. And the joystick program that I have been playing with a little bit um, it was still also throwing one syntax error, but it was something where it's like printing back to the monitor the battery status. So I just commented it all right. out. Right. We don't. And so I think not mission critical. I think this is gonna work, <clears throat> but I want more room than we have in the lab mm. to play with this. Mm. So yeah. I think we should mm. go on a field trip. Field trip to a parking lot. <laughs> 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 Although. Depending on the water saturation level of the soil, we could also attempt to see how it works off road. Right, of our location. Of our location. Our location shoot. I'm looking forward to the audio problems we're about to have. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we'll see you there. Okay. Well, we're on our way to the robot field to launch our robot. 
Amy's driving. I was so, so nervous. <laughs> Thea in first position. God damn. Oh. 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 oh, okay. Hey. Okay, side. we're here. I'm gonna start by connecting this battery pack. Here we are at the park. Here we are. We are at the location shoot. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Beefy. On. <clears throat> and now, set aside. I'm going to go into computer. <sighs> Using the Wi Fi. I'm going to open B and C. No, I'm not. I'm going to turn this on. Okay. Like an alternative battery pack? Uh huh. I do know that I need to hear that click. I need help. Okay. This is my Your job. Am I pulling on this? Is to, yeah, get this tight enough and it needs to not be there because this is the bottom of the robot, so it needs to not drag in the dirt. So it needs to be attaching kind of over here and it needs to. Just engage. <laughs> okay. Oh, I got it to click even here. Okay. Oh yeah. Will it ever unclick? Now, on ye old monster board, I'ma pull up. Uh, I'm using idle. I usually go back and forth between idle and spider when I want to do. <clears throat> I'm going to open Monsterborg Monster Joy. Nice. Hand me the Hrimot. I nice. have never in my life once gotten this thing to actually pair using <clears throat> the Bluetooth utility, but I have run this before. All right, we're going to run module. Joystick found. All right, take the robot over there. Oh. No, you take the camera. I got the robot. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I can't believe it. Taylor, that's awesome. Okay, backwards and forwards are working. I mean, as long as it's making a connection, everything else we can work on. Well, this one's supposed to be the turn one. Look at it go! What'd you do?
So it was going forward and backward on both sides when I did this switch. Then I realized if I hold down a button, see now it's doing the other side. I held both of them down, it would do both of them. This is also not how I want him to turn. I want him, her, it. <laughs> I want it to turn in a so I want one to go forward and one to go backward at the same time. I want tank steering. You, that, well, I was just about to say, just like you would expect a tank tread. Because then he can just spin on a dime. This button does nothing under any circumstances. Well, I wonder if it's just a button mapping issue. Exactly. Oh, it has to be. Yeah. So we ran it again at the park, and the wheel fell off, <laughs> so it never quite, we had a, we had a grub screw fail, but it ran exactly the same as it had before, where right. I could go up, I could go backwards and forwards, and it was giving power to both sides, until I pressed a button, and thereafter it would only do one or the other depending on which button I held down. And if I held down both, it did not do both. So I'm really confused, but you know, that's robotics. You get partial successes and, um, and we'll... partial failures. <laughs> um, in other news, this didn't work. In other news, I've never gotten the camera to work. <laughs> I have tried for hours to get the camera to work. Um, so I think the dream the reason I keep coming back to robotics, despite the fact that it can be super frustrating at times, is that being able to write code to affect things in the real world, like the movement of this through space, I think is one of the coolest things computers yeah. can do. It's super awesome. It's just so fun. Because um, I don't want an RC car. I would have bought one. I want this guy to take in data. Ideally, we'd get a GPS. Yeah. And the way I'm envisioning this is, I can order a USB GPS and then see if I can write this <laughs> See code. if we can make that work. Yeah, but um, like the idea being like, you know, you put the robot on the ground and you say, get your coordinates. You are here. And then once it's done that, it switches to joystick mode and I drive it away. Me. And then, I hit a button on the joystick to say, okay, control is going back to you, the joystick doesn't work anymore, and it figures out where it is, Yeah. does some math to figure out where it needs to be to come back to the original target coordinates. And you will be awesome. It would be so cool. Well, and I can see this tying, well, I know you have other ideas of how it could tie into rockets, but I can also see, like, hey, you've launched here, you landed here, drive yourself back to me, mm -hmm. I'm that lazy, and I don't even want to walk to go get this rocket. So we need a rocket with wheels, <clears throat> or a little robot littler than this, well, yeah. this might fit, no. Um, <laughs> with its own parachute that drives back to you. Yeah. Um, that was actually... There was a competition. There was a recent competition mm -hmm. that that was the goal. Of and it. they were solved in different ways. Some people flew it back and yeah. some people tried to drive. But, you know. My rocket robot idea, and this is what I want to do for my level three, is probably something very similar to the Thunderbird motor controller. I've been playing around with a motor controller that is just a hat for the Raspberry Pi that's it's not Thunderbird brand. Anyway, <coughs> the idea being... The rocket goes up, and it's got an altimeter on it so that it knows it's going up. Mm -hmm. And then when it reaches Apogee, because it's doing math on those right. the altimeter numbers. And now the numbers are about are getting, have stopped and are getting smaller. Right. Then the motor controller 
sends a signal to the motor, the motor spins, a valve turns, and compressed <clears throat> CO2 cartridge blows the rocket apart to get the shoot out. That is the goal. And sometimes when I work on more pedestrian, earthbound robots <laughs> and have difficulties with it, I feel like that's so far away. Right. But then, I don't know, something will happen and I'll get excited about it again. Anyway. Um, we also got a leaf in our battery pack, which I consider to be a badge of honor. <laughs> Rough and tumble. Yeah. All right. Well, here's our iPod. <laughs> uh, so, the three wheels. Uh, you know, one day we'll come back to this. Or but we'll it, decide to do something different. I mean, the joystick, it, it, when you push buttons on the joystick, movement happens. Yeah, yeah. There were definitely some successes. Yeah. I'm not totally like it, 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 right right away. Mm -hmm. It's just it some worked. of the movements were unexpected. And the code recognized the joystick, although the computer didn't think it yeah. had. So but who cares? Sometimes you get a win. <laughs> Alright. Well, um thanks for watching. Right. Maybe to be continued. We'll see. There will be more robotics. More robotics for sure. They are not popular videos at this point and I don't care because I keep coming back to robotics because I keep playing with computers and wanting to take it <clears throat> further like oh, I yeah. just yeah it's for some reason you know anytime I use a joystick to move a character on a screen my brain just goes to why can't I do extrapolate this IRL yep yeah so we're gonna force you to do this with us <laughs> <sighs> if we have to suffer <laughs> <laughs>